Jennifer. Thank you. Thanksgiving, and I will be playing the drum, so please enjoy. Um, and there will be just a moment or so of silence after the prayer. It is a little long, it's perhaps six minutes or so, so just so you know, it's going to carry on a little while, and then there will be about a minute of silence at the end. Thank you. Excerpts from the Haudenosaunee Iroquois Thanksgiving Prayer, Ohendon Kariwa Tagwe, pardon my pronunciation, the words that come before all else. Today we have gathered and we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. We are all thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life. We know its power in many forms. Waterfalls and rain, mists, streams, rivers, and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of water. Now our minds are one. We turn our minds to all the fish life in the water. They were instructed to cleanse and purify the water. They also give themselves to us as food. We are grateful that we can still find pure water. So we turn now to the fish and send our greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. Now we turn toward the vast fields of plant life. With one mind, we turn to honor and thank all the food plants we harvest from the garden. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and berries have helped the people survive. Many other living things draw strength from them too. We gather all the plant foods together as one and send them a greeting of thanks. Now our minds are one. Now we turn to all the medicine herbs of the world. From the beginning they were instructed to take away sickness. They were always waiting and ready to heal us. We are happy there are still among us those special few who remember how to use these plants for healing. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the medicines and to the keepers of the medicines. Now our minds are one. We gather our minds together to send greetings and thanks to all the animal life in the world. They have many things to teach us as people. We are honored by them when they give up their lives, so we may use their bodies as food for our people. We see them near our homes and in the deep forests. We are glad they are still here, and we hope that it will always be so. Now our minds are one. We now turn our thoughts to the trees. Some provide us with shelter and shade, others with fruit, 
beauty, and other useful things. Many people of the world use a tree as a symbol of peace and strength. With one mind, we greet and thank the tree life. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who move and fly about over our heads. The Creator gave them beautiful songs. Each day they remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. To all the birds, from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. We are all thankful to the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help us to bring the change of seasons from the four directions they come, bringing us messages and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. Now our minds are one. We now send greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day, without fail, he travels the sky from east to west, bringing the light of a new day. He is the source of all the fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together to give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the nighttime sky. She is the leader of women all over the world, and she governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time, and it is the moon who watches over the arrival of children here on earth. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our grandmother, the moon. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to the stars. Now our minds are one. Now we turn our thoughts to the Creator, or Great Spirit, and send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on this Mother Earth. For all the love that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks to the Creator. Now our minds are one. We have now arrived at the place where we end our words. Of all the things we have made, it was not our intention to leave anything out. If something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send such greetings and thanks in their own way. Now. I distinctly remember my disbelief when I was told that one day I would die and Jennifer would cease to be. This made no sense to me. More than a childish ego, I remember an innate knowing that the true essence of my soul, all souls, had, be, had been and always would be. I have been driven for the search for meaning, for the meaning of it all, since then. The other incident in my life which propelled me further into the mysteries of life and beyond was the death of my mother when I was 25. Left with so much unsaid, I struggled to find meaning in her loss. Such tragedy must have purpose. In my searching, 
I came across many people and modalities that help to answer some questions and heal some of the trauma. But a few years ago, I heard of something called QHHT, Quantum Hypnosis Healing Technique, and I was really blown away by its potential for healing not only my scars in this life, but those of the past which still hold sway in my psyche today. So to give a personal example, uh, the first time I had a QHHT session myself, uh, I was taken to a past life as a young man and in Europe during World War I. And I lived with my grandmother, who I felt responsible for. But as I lay dying of my injuries on the battlefield, I regretted that I would not be able to fulfill my commitment to my grandmother. Later, I recognized my present-day mother-in-law and understood a sense of obligation to her that had previously perplexed me. So, I'm really thrilled to tell you about this technique. I'll give you a little bit more background. The quantum hypnosis healing opens a channel to our subconscious where answers to present day questions and challenges can be found. To re reiterate what Peggy so beautifully said earlier, raising our personal coherence and vibration and vibratory rate is the essence, the purpose of all healing modalities, including QHHT. I understand the quantum part to mean beyond our traditional five senses, beyond space and time. So briefly, quantum hypnosis healing technique is a form of gentle hypnotic past life regression, named by its founder, the late Dolores Cannon. Dolores' technique is a unique combination of past life therapy and a connection to one's higher self, enabling us to first view significant scenes from two or three other lives, followed by direct communication from a higher knowing, a different perspective, hidden from our daily conscious mind. The theory of past life regression as a plausible therapeutic tool was popularized in the West through the writings of the renowned psychic reader Edgar Cayce, whom many of you have probably heard of, known in his time as the Sleeping Prophet. In, his, in the book Many Mansions, the Edgar Cayce story, as described by the psychologist Dr. Gina Surminara, uh, is uh, in discussing reincarnation, she states that age regression experiments in hypnosis have established the fact that there is stored in certain strata of the mind a detailed and sequential memory of every memory lived through since birth, and that the KC clairvoyance would seem to indicate that it is possible for a hypnotized subject to discover the past life history of other individuals. But perhaps more important than this, it would seem that it may be possible for an individual using hypnosis to relive his own past lives. What happens in a QHHT session? The client is asked to prepare a list of questions which they would like the answers to, anything that is on their mind. We start with a chat about their motivation and intention in coming for a session, and they discuss their questions and help me to understand the situation. So all is taken in confidence. We then go to the room where the session will take place, and I do record all sessions, so nothing is lost. And then we slowly enter a relaxed state. And what I use to do that is my little bhutan here, and I will just give you a little demonstration. What I do to help conduct people is just play my bhutan for a few moments just before we begin the session. So I'm just going to give you a little example.
So we slowly enter a very relaxed state where the conscious mind can take a back seat. I need the client to describe all the images that come to them, as flimsy as they may be. Gradually, the scene takes on life, and we find ourselves in the middle of an action scene. I move the client to several scenes of importance, and then to the end of life. This is a time to reflect on the purpose of that life from a spirit perspective. Later, we might gain more insight from the higher self. The last half, where we speak directly to the higher self, allows time to ask questions prepared and to get a broader perspective on them. In a hypnosis session, the day-to-day -day beta mind is asked and allowed to step back as in a meditation and let, let a connection to a fuller perspective be realized. One which has the hidden secrets of our psyche's shadow waiting to be allowed their voice. The shadow has been holding on and protecting these secrets because the ego <clears throat> believes they are dangerous and must be repressed. However, they invariably leak out into our day-to-day -day lives, triggering emotional outbursts or manifesting as long-held grudges and judgments. They make themselves known in many forms, troubling our inner peace and harmony. So some traumas of this life may be known to us, but the older, deeper traumas that we have no conscious memory of play out in our life uh, acting like abandoned bombs lying dormant in our psychic field. From a safe distance, QHHT opens us up to these past events and presents them to us in short vignettes that we can observe. Just like a movie, we may become emotionally involved. In fact, we often do. But part of us always knows it's just a scene from the past. It is this observation and recognition of these scenes that allows their energy, frozen in time, so to speak, to release their hold, their jobs done. Mm -hmm. To quote Eckhart Tolle, if your mind carries a heavy burden of the past, you will experience more of the same. The past perpetuates itself through lack of presence. The quality of your consciousness of this moment is what shapes the future. So, we literally shape our future by changing in the now what is stuck in the past. Mm. Creating a new timeline unhindered by past psychic weights. As well as looking at our shadow side, a QHHG session can give us insight to our strengths and power in this life. One of my clients had a glimpse of a life as a successful and confident actor who left that life with little regret and a feeling of having accomplished his goals. This reminded the client of their ability to create a life of their choosing of a time when they wielded power and money in a positive manner, secure in their talents and ability to care for those they loved. We gain as much by seeing our strengths as, as revealed to us as our weaknesses. I want to thank you all for coming today and more importantly, for coming to this planet at this time. I believe that a significant number of us chose, even begged, to come here at this crucial time, this crucible. We heard the call from Source to incarnate, to witness, and to assist. In this cosmic ascension, I, in this cosmic ascension, I can personally sense a shift in just the last few years, certainly the last 20 or 30, a multitude of movements and protests are calling out, calling into question 
the ways we have been thinking about the earth, about the, the creatures on it, and all of and all and all and also our fellow fellow human beings, of course. We accept that the world is changing physically in dramatic ways. The chaos and uncertainty being felt is bringing up global and personal shadows. I believe that going inside into our own psyches to uncover and resolve our shadow is the way to connect with our, is the ultimate way to peace and harmony on a global level. One of the ways to delve inside and connect with our deeper self and bring those dark corners to light is through a QHHT session. So I invite you to consider adding it to other methods that you may use, such as meditation or quiet reflection, to help find the calm and the peace we are all longing for. I would like to quote, quote Greg Braden, an author and lecturer on bridging science and spirituality, speaking of heart-brain coherence. And he says, if we can just hold together as a global family and embrace the new discoveries that tell us the deepest truths about ourselves, about our existence, and as we bring those truths to bear upon our lives, we become the best version of ourselves and the best version of the world that's possible. I believe we will see that in our lifetime. We're seeing it happen now. So there are some people in the audience who have had a QHHT session with me, and I'm just going to ask that if you are willing to perhaps uh, have people recognize you, and then maybe later they might ask you a question or two, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand or making yourself known uh, and uh, let people know that you might be willing to answer a question or two of theirs because they've had that experience. Thank you very much, and I'm just going to finish off today with a beautiful song by India Ari called I Am Light.
star, a piece of